So good afternoon, uh, everyone. And, uh, we are so happy to have you uh, for this panel discussion on data-driven innovation. Many are still joining. There are people working at the background admitting them, so we shall not wait anymore. We are waiting for five minutes. We will slowly begin. So thank you, everyone, for joining our panel discussion on data-driven innovation. We shall start this whole panel discussion with a prayer led by Dr. Robert Simon. He is the person in charge of the youth ministry, youth animation in South Asia. So I invite Father Robert Simon to lead us into prayer. Hi everyone. Let us invoke the Lord with a simple, innocent and childlike heart, asking him to be present with us like a father, guide and an inspirer. Lord God, out of love you created this world and you filled it with innumerable and marvelous gifts and you invited human beings to use them well and better the world. Down the history, humanity has utilized well what you have given them, and particularly genius minds and hearts through their interactions and creative knowledge have enhanced the world and lives of people with the resources you have given. Inspire and bless us, Lord, that we may continue to multiply the resources that are available with us for the good of the society and particularly for the well-being of those in need and those at risk. May this coming together enrich each one of us individually and collectively all of us who are at the service of the young veterans. All this we humbly pray you for these and all other needs. Amen. Thank you, Father Ram Simon, for giving us prayer. Okay, um, uh, let's all mute our mic, whether you are on with your video or not, it's up to you. Uh, kindly mute your mic, only those who speak will uh, unmute and speak. So let's follow this as a stand, uh, standing room uh, all through the uh, program that we are having this afternoon. Once again, in the name of Father Tony Pelliseri, our Secretary of the Moscow Yard Forum, and all of us in the National Office, I welcome each and every one of you for this panel discussion on data-driven innovation. How we can increase the impact through use of technology and data. Challenges are the foundation on which every civil society organization is built. It is Yuval Nova Harari in his book 21 Lessons for the 21st Century. He says, those who own the data own the future. He beautifully goes on to say, he argues that inequality will soon be based upon the ownership of data, not on the haves and have-nots, including the economy will be controlled with the data. He goes on to say that data will soon eclipse both land and machinery as the most important asset and politics will be struggling to control the flow of data. This is the uh, idea that is going on in the current situation. And for us, who are working in the social sector, especially those of us who are working with the young at risk, challenges are what it remains. Whatever you do, we come across challenges upon challenges. Whether it may be from the government or it may be from the inspections, I think Father uh, Greg will be 
you know, uh, expert who will be sharing with us on the struggles, how he won over all this inspection mania that was taking over the art centers and other CCIs in the recent past. And in all this complex and layered NGO environment, we are overburdened with challenges from various sectors and managers put learning and development activities on the back seat. It is obvious because we are challenged to do people management, time management, you know, every child or young people whom we meet, meet bring about challenges and finance management and we can go on to that. And all these are done by a few people and it is, we are asked to perform with a greater ability to manage people and all the other challenges around the institution that we manage. We think we are in the information age, but the experts say that we are moving in from information age to experience age, including Facebook, they say this, say that it is, it is the previous era too. Technology helps us to attain accuracy in our understanding of beneficiaries. That is how positively we can look at it in following up our staff, volunteers, forecasting the future and many more. That is what our panelists are here to present before us. Data is used for many things. Elections are one with data, that is what they say. And uh, our, our desires are converted into data. You look at it at the end of it, do people know what where you are going and what are the tourist places you can visit, what is the object or the things that you are, uh, your favorite things and so many suggestions come to us through our email and other information by which these media giants and the data giants do control the work. Our panelists are here to reflect with us on the need, power and future of data. They have had their experience and they are looking for how we can harness the power of data in our yard centers, the management, so that we can serve the young at risk in a better way in the coming days. DBR Forum is providing this opportunity to listen to these people with the experience on data. We are not only satisfied with data-driven decision-making, data-driven planning, data-driven management, but we are called to go into data-driven innovation. That is what this panel is here to reflect with us. So thanks once again for joining us. Now we, I'll tell you the procedure. So we. We will start with Father Neelam Ratnakumar on the need of data. Then, in between, we will have the experience speak with Father Yesudas Albert. Then, again, we will go and listen to the next panel on power of data by Father Joseph Leo. Then, we will listen to Father Matthew Thomas. After that, the future of data is presented by Father P.T. Joseph. After that, we will listen to Father. Almeida Gregory on his experience. Then we will have a question hour. And those of you who, who may be getting a lot of questions as the speakers are presenting to us their ideas, you can start typing in the you know chat box. You can keep typing in the chat box your questions and uh, in order and according to the type of questions at the end of all the speakers, once everybody finishes, we will take up the questions in the time allotted. Then we will have, we will conclude the words from Father Tony, our secretary of DBR Forum. We will start with need of data. Father Neelam Ratnakumar is the youngest, possibly uh, with the statistics and the data available, is the youngest director in India for, in, in the R centers, to my knowledge. He has got seven centers in Navajivan Vijayawada, Navajivan Balabhavan Vijayawada, and he is managing about 120 staff. 
I really admired when he accepted to um, take up this center as in charge, which was built up or envisaged by Father Koshi, who was managing for several years. In our province, there was always a discussion who is going to manage. And I'm happy to see a young person managing such a uh, big institution. And the few interactions that I had with him, he always said, I want data, I want information. And uh, how do I manage the staff father? Can you suggest some of the technologies that are available to manage some of the centers which are spread around? I think that led, leads us to the first topic on the need of data. Over to Father Neelam Ratna Kumar, Director, Dombas Kunabu Chival Vijayawara. Welcome Father and thanks for being in the panel. Oh, dear, so good afternoon, all the fathers and uh, all the people who are on this platform. Am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. Yes. yes. I thank for the kindness for giving me this opportunity. I think this is my first uh, public uh, presentation or uh, performance that I am uh, doing. I beg your pardon if there are some uh, communication gaps or failure to mm, write uh, home my points. Okay. So I am given the topic need of the data. Okay. As Father Akhenes is told, I am a person who mm, constantly looks for data to do something different or something creative. Can we move on to the second slide, uh, Malishwar, Maheshwar? So, Father Aquinas asked me, hmm, what is the need of the data? And I am asking myself, what is the uh, need of the data for my organization also? Let's begin with uh, an example let's think that uh, i'm a patient i go to a doctor the doctor can start the treatment unless he has a very good diagnosis no doctor or no professional doctor will take me directly to the operation room takes a knife and performs a, an operation there are different procedures that he performs before uh, beginning the medication or the treatment. So in every walk of life, we need data. Good doctor, if he wants to begin treatment, good diagnosis is needed. Second slide, please. And whenever we want to achieve best results, a tidy data is a must. These days we use a lot of social uh, uh, network platforms. We Google a lot of things. And Google or Flipkart or Amazon, whichever um, search engine that you are using, that's constantly monitoring what we are really searching for. As per the data that is produced by these search engines, these companies, so-called the corporate companies, or the online, online marketing um, um, platforms are coming out with the new products to satisfy the uh, customers. The same way, if we have a very good uh, and uh, tidy data, we can achieve very good results. Let's move on. Next slide. A quality data can enable can enable us to write new pages of one's organization and 
one's institutions. We are Salesians, we are known for spearheading a lot of projects. We are uh, known for innovative hmm, works and um, we are given always uh, a remark saying that we are very creative. We have begun all these initiatives because of the quality data that we have with us. So whenever we want to write new pages of our organizations, need survey is the beautiful uh, path breaker to start any initiative. So quality data can enable us to new, write new pages of our organization. So what are the areas that we have uh, uh, taken to start something new in Navajivan? So we wanted to do something new for our organization in uh, Vijayawada. And uh, we said simply we can't take up new initiatives unless we have uh, the data with us, unless we feel the need for the data. Next slide. So good data will give us better choices and will make us render better services for our children. During the lockdown, when most of our staff are uh, um, sitting at home or working from home, our staff also did a very beautiful work. Navajivan has, has developed a beautiful tool of doing door-to-door -door survey. We wanted to know what our children are doing during this COVID. They're staying at home. What are they doing? really doing? So instead of simply calling them over the phone, we said we should go and visit our children's homes to feel personally what our children are doing. And the tool that was developed by Navajivan Bharabhan Vijayawada has helped us to take mm, new initiatives. It has revealed wonderful uh, mm, uh, results. We have nearly 100, 420 children staying with us. Because of this survey, the results show that not all, not all the 420 children need to stay with Navajivan Balabhavan. Nearly 203 children can be kept back mm, with their families. And we realize that because of the um, need survey that we have done or the door to door survey that we have done, we realize that family strengthening is the need of the hour. So, this is the uh, need of the data. Uh, that can help us to go ahead with better choices and better services for our children. And um, most of the mm, children are referred to us through CWC. And when they come to CWC, just in front of the C, uh, CWC bench, parents are uh, told that mm, their parents say, uh, tell the CWC bank uh, saying that they are from a broken family, child is not able to stay at home. So like that, so many uh, children who don't deserve Navajivan services have entered Navajivan. So when we did this door-to-door -door survey, we found out that so-called the broken families are uh, united once again. They are very happy, okay? And uh, they're happy with the Naujivan services because Naujivan is looking after A to Z um, uh, needs of the children. So all these things mm, are contradi uh, contradicting what is told by CWC to Naujivan. So this data has revealed mm, beautiful points. And second example that mm, uh, I can put here is some of the children who are with us in Naujivan centers. Some of their parents are working abroad. They are staying in Gulf countries, uh, earning a good bit. So they don't know what to do and they know that uh, uh, like Naujavan, 
centers can look after their children so they have, they have placed their children in, a, in our center so good data will enhance our choices and enhance our services as well the third example that uh, uh, i would like to quote here is along with the family strengthening data revealed to us that this is the need of the hour to start um, counseling center for children and the addiction center for you know, youth nowadays youth whenever they face any small problem any ch small child any problem that comes their way their immediate decision is to end their life so because of this uh, data results we are planning to write new pages of navachira let's continue and good data a qualitative data can reduce the financial burden of organization we write a lot of projects whether we need the projects or not but we keep on applying you know, for a lot of schemes and at times when we don't get you know, sufficient money it becomes running certain projects become you know, a burden for us when we did uh, the survey of all our children we found out that nearly 147 of our children are availing new government schemes most of our children got 15000 rupees for education help that is our uh, chief minister is giving as a um, jagananna kanaka as for children to uh, get educated so when we calculated that amount 146 into 15000 it has uh, uh, come up to 22 lakhs say so, on one side the government is giving a lot of schemes to children our children on the other side we are also uh, pouring out doling out a lot of money to look after these children and we do have uh, certain personal benefactors who are really helping certain individuals so when we have a correct data and filtered the data we found that uh, lot of financial burdens can be reduced when we have a neat and tidy data and not all of them need duplication of uh, services so that's one of the uh, uh, points that we found out because of our um, survey that we did and it can also control financial leakages we know in our own centers how through different uh, in uh, different ways the finances can be just slipping out of our hands or out of our pockets and good data also can help us to use our finances well now most of our um, um, one agent uh, one uh, donor from abroad he Uh, sent a link saying that father why are you applying for new projects okay when i get the data of your government saying that uh, they are giving you so much of uh, fund for uh, children so funding agencies are available uh, aware of different um, schemes that they are giving to our children so they do have data and they are also updated with the uh, a uh, lot of schemes that are available in different parts of the world or the, uh, especially in andhra where they are funding us so like this uh, when we have a very good data a lot of you know, financial burdens can be reduced let's move on to the third point this is one of the areas huh? data is a tool for monitoring your stuff or our stuff this is one of the uh, uh, strengths or uh, success points that we are experiencing right now as far as i can said we have nearly um, 120 staff 
they are spread across the district most of them go for the you know, um, field job then how to monitor these uh, staff they have only biometric uh, machines in few centers and they can't come to the office put the thumb impression and go back to the field so it is a tedious job so we wanted to uh, find a tool you know, a proper data to monitor our staff just to give you an example we have a staff who you know, comes late every day you know, even if she, he or she comes to the office or not does the work or not uh, we know in the uh, print attendance she puts 9:30 as the reporting time and 5:30 as the uh, leaving the office time even on public holidays we found that she is putting on the attendance so then we thought that we need a tool to monitor you know, our staff so we are using one particular software okay wherever you are in whichever place you are you just take a selfie okay and your attendance is taken not only the attendance is taken okay so uh, even the uh, location is tagged sometimes um, we know that some of our uh, staff say that they are in um, vijayawada but they may not be in vijayawada but they may be in a some other place called hyderabad but when we use this uh, data tool it gives the time as well as the location and with this tool we can also um uh, know on what purpose our staff has gone to the field or wherever he is working so he can register on what purpose he is Uh, uh in that particular location why is he or she in that uh, current location we can know and using this particular tool we can also know mm, the distance that particular staff has traveled so from the office or from the uh, location that you have uh, uh, taken the photo attendance from that place to your work area or whatever work that you are going to do it calculates hmm, the distance so with the help of this uh, uh, data that is available we know exactly where our staff is and in which location he is working and the purpose of his uh, uh, work that particular day and how much of distance that he or she has traveled so all these four things can be known with a simple tool that now jeevan is using and apart uh, 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 from that uh, apart from this um, it is very easy to monitor 120 staff okay we, we can't daily visit uh, all the 120 staff whether they are in the field or not this simple tool gives us uh, first hand information and the beauty of this uh, tool is that every 30 minutes it gives us an update okay whether that particular staff is in that particular location or has he moved to some other location so it tracks the movement of the uh, staff okay so this is a beautiful tool that we now even use is using for monitoring mm, our staff it is nothing to suspect their work or uh, any of those things but it is to enhance uh, the work of the organization and to enhance mm, our progress and uh, our activities for the children next and uh, good data is needed to know how well we are doing okay when we turn the pages of navjivan balabhavan okay we know that the data reveals that navjivan balabhavan has rescued uh, 50992 children it's a big success 
and it's a big data okay and um, in one place in vijayawada we have rescued nearly 8549 you know, child labor and the government is really happy you know, with the work that we did and they have given a beautiful place you know, to render our services more and uh, out of these 50992 32210 are home integrated so when we speak about the data that is available and when we uh, tell our uh, donors or agencies you know, funding agencies about our success rate they are very happy and uh, they are more enthusiastic in coming you know, to aid us to support us so that through you know, organizations or um, societies like naujivan many you know, uh, children's lives can be touched so another important area you know, the importance of the need of the data is to know that how well we are doing so these are the uh, four points you know, that i would like i wanted to tell you, you know, uh, underlining the need of the data next slide and too much of data also can slow down the system so we will be having lot of uh, um, data that is bundled piled or uh, thrown onto our tables or our systems let's not go for too much of data to slow down our work let's have uh, uh, less luggage and more comfort okay thank you very much and if you have any questions we will take up the questions at the end and one more thing i forgot to mention um i'm mobile app using that mobile app okay, whenever i go i will go to speak at, to a child or when the child comes to speak to me okay i can simply open the app and uh, know about the child uh, at least the basic information so when i tell him okay wow you know it's good to know that you are doing uh, this study and it is your birthday today or uh, you celebrated uh, this uh, function or um, whatever important thing that if we mention to the child child feels really happy and uh, ch children are wondering how we are able to know about uh, the children's yeah, birthdays or the staff birthdays it is very simple it is already in our hand it is in a mobile and the mobile app is really helpful and when we had um, one to one uh, filtering of our children when we didn't know about the photos of certain children about the whereabouts about about of our children uh, we looked into this software and the software was giving very good information so thanks to father aquinas and uh, i must appreciate the entire team thank you very much thank you father ratna for the wonderful presentation on the need of data uh, you have highlighted on various aspects on staff management of the children and knowing the details of the children from mobile app and how you manage your staff members and how you are able to manage your programs and projects your decision making etc thank you very much for bringing to our knowledge your practical experience at this young age so we thank you, thank you and appreciate you and wish you all the best we will take up some of the questions during the question and answer time We are now with us Father Albert Esudas. Um, father was Father is currently the Assistant uh, Administrator of Paimatu, Anuila. Before this, he was the Assistant Director and Administrator and Project Director of Empowerment of Girls Working in Spinning Mills in about 30 villages in Rasipuram. They had a wonderful project. So I would like to ask for Ramdev a few questions for us to understand his experience on data. Thanks once again, young and energetic person who has got experience and who speaks very passionately about the new data. For Ramdev, you have worked as in so many positions as administrator, and you were also working in one of the big projects in your area on the spinning mills, especially with the girls working 
in about 30 images. While we were doing all these works, have you ever felt the need of data? And if at all, can you ex share your experience with us? Uh, yes, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it was a very nice uh, experience working in different fields, especially in Salem. I was three years uh, in the art sector as soon as uh, after my ordination uh, in the social field. Uh, particularly, I want to share one of the experiences that I had uh, working in the village, um, 30 villages empowering uh, adults and girls who are working in spinning mills. And there is a saying in Tamil, there is a song, Poi sonnalum, mei sonnalum, adai vayal solli payanile, adai maiyile nanaitthi paper ila aditsa, maruttu pesa halile. It means, whether you say a lie or a truth, if it is in writing, nobody can ask you, nobody can defeat you. That is the meaning of the song. And in fact, uh, it was a great experience going through so many uh, inspections and the auditing. And uh, one moment I felt uh, really the need of data, uh, wherein which auditor took a hundred rupees note and then asked me, how do you cheat this hundred rupees uh, note? Then I took a purse and then kept it. Then he gave me a bill, hundred rupees bill, how do you cheat this bill? And uh, the way the bills were arranged, he was showing some of the bills were in right position, some of the bills were not in a good position. We are not able to define. One thing I want I learned uh, the importance of data and the need of data. One thing we need to define ourselves. We are doing so many missions and we are doing so many innovative uh, social works. We are known for uh, solutions are known for uh, different kind of ministries, new intervention. So, new inventions. And then, the thing is that we need to defend ourselves, as far as rightly saying, Father Neil Amatna was saying, to achieve the best results and to defend ourselves. In fact, we need uh, the data. And, and that's what uh, made me to think of the importance and need of the data working in these villages. And as an administrator, I felt uh, going through many auditing. How uh, the, at the end, the auditor put a statement: when I take a bill, it should be a, a story reading. It should be like a story, so it should be connected with the, your report, and, uh, and then it has to be attached with so many supporting documents. And that's what we feel that uh, data. So in that moment, I really felt the need of data. And in fact, that made me to give importance to the data. Yes, 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 yes Dr. Albert. The statistics we have with us, it says, Kirchi province with uh, so many centers around, you have reached up to uh, in uh, in about four to five years time, about 11,500 children. And uh, the interesting data that we got in the recent past, in 2019 alone, uh, you have rescued about 187 child labor. Also the number of child abuse cases that you have been dealing in your area, especially in Coimbatore area, is about 161. Okay, these numbers reveal certain issues, issue-based uh, things that are coming out in the open, especially when we rescue children. You know, we need different types of children. We have been hearing quite some time about data for policy changes. We use data for policy changes, you know. Something is very widely talked about. Do you have any experience in this particular aspect of how data can be used in the policy changes? If you have any experience, please share with us. Uh, yes, Father. Uh, I had a very great experience. Again, going back to the same ministry that I was working in spinning mills, uh, adolescent girls who are working in spinning mills. In those villages, we were able to achieve some of the, uh, our achievement goals, in which we were, we are not able to achieve as an NGO. But uh, uh, we are in a position 
and we could be also in a position uh, that in which we, are, if we are strong in our data, we will be able to bring up uh, changes in the policy, which means some of the government schemes and some of the government uh, uh, systems that are in government will be activated through NGOs like us. And, uh, for example, that uh, we, as, I, as I was saying, 30 villages, uh, there were a village level child protection committee. We are coming out with a number of issues with regard to children. And this village level uh, child protection com uh, committee is not an active one. So we were able to uh, trigger this village level uh, VLCPC, village level uh, child right uh, protection. We were able to work along with the government. We were able to make the system active. So we could be able to bring changes in the policy. So the collector put an order that all the village level child protection committee should be inactive and the report should be uh, submitted in, uh, within a uh, uh, quite short of uh, short term. And that, uh, that was a tremendous experience that I had uh, in working in those villages. And uh, at that time I felt the need of uh, uh, the importance of uh, and the data and this data would bring more changes in the level of policy also thank you father the last question uh, you have been going through a uh, lot of inspection both in uh, salem as well as in Coimbatore, and you you have also expressed some time to us that you know social audit and other experiences uh, we we have we are repeating some of the things that we do in your current position as administrator or in dealing with the staff you are also dealing with the HR or in your dealing with the CWC have you ever felt the need of data and some of the systems that we can build so that it is helpful for our management of the center as well as management of the staff and children have you ever any experience in this regard? Uh, yes, Father. Uh, as soon as uh, I had a transfer from Salem to uh, Coimbatore, these uh, both centers are similar. They are centers uh, similar, having the same projects, similar projects like child lane, reception unit, and open shelter and children's home. And the thing is that only when the government auditing or the social auditing is done, we separate all the things. The same mistakes are repeated again and again. And then uh, I felt the need of uh, the importance of uh, data. I mean, when we stand in front of the C CWC or DCPU or uh, in some stakeholders meeting, and the data that we present is valuable. And in one moment, uh, at one moment, uh, I was in the collector's office for a meeting. And then when we when we uh, presenting along with the statistics um, for the child line, I was uh, presenting the number of uh, children who are affected in these areas, and so we do this action. It is very easily granted, the permissions are very easily granted. And then on the uh, thing that you are getting permissions or uh, getting uh, your voice is heard in the public, uh, your voice is heard in the government system, only when you are updated with the uh, uh, new rules and the new statistics, and the press meeting, again the press meeting, uh, I had a chance to meet the uh, uh, press conference in Coimbatore. Uh, again, they were asking for all the data, statistics, how many number of children are affected in this area, and what are the uh, uh, children, age of the children, and what are the categories of children, and which part of uh, Coimbatore is affected. So, all this data helped me to present the data well, and then uh, I had a good experience of presenting uh, our data and then it gives reputation for our NGO and only then we are uh, able to stand uh, uh, defend ourselves and to achieve some of the programs that we are uh, carrying out in the government along with working along with the government. Yes, sir. Thank you for the Albert Esudas for sharing some of your experiences at this young age. You have been managing some of the big projects 
and you have felt the need of data, you have also adapted some of the systems and you are also working on SOP, standard operating procedures in your organization and setting up things. Thank you very much for sharing with us. Now we are moving on to the next speaker in our panel on power of data. This is presented by Father Joseph Leo. As you are aware, Father Joseph Leo is the director of Don Bosco Ambilla, Chennai. He has been uh, managing job placement center in Varigati of Chennai province and various other positions before he came. He is also a computer wizard, he has done his masters in computer. And uh, he is managing five centers, 35 night school, and uh, in, uh, in those centers about 90 staff. And recently, when the COVID uh, affected, he is also helping, he is also working in collaboration with the Corporation of Chennai, and there he is coordinating about 196 staff in this program. So many projects spread across the city of Chennai, and so many, he is also reaching out to many different kinds of children, especially child marriages and all that number of cases that they have been dealing with. Really amazing. Thanks for accepting to be with us and presenting your ideas. We are here to listen to Father Joseph Leo on the power of the So thank you. Uh, at the outset, I thank for Aquinas and for Tony for inviting all the YAR leaders to animate on this topic, data-driven uh, innovation, uh, definitely a need of the YAR. And, uh, you know, data drives you mad. Now, don't feel sad because my power of data presentation will be very short. Okay. Uh, just sharing a few experiences. I have put uh, data as an acronym. So, Maha, uh, you can go to the next slide. So, D-A-T-A. -A. So, just summarizing all that the speakers have spoken and may be speaking later on uh, about the power of data. D, for example, directs the leader, the organization and the whole team to achieve the results, right? The belief that you have in the beginning of your journey defines your journey. In the same way, the belief that you have in the power of the data at the beginning of a problem will give you a solution and destination too. So, uh, it enables me personally, the data guides me and leads me to take certain collective decision based on objectives and scientific data research. That's the first thing. Second, it also analyzes the whole reality. It is a 360 degree analysis of the reality. So you get a holistic perspective of the whole problem. You have to really at a micro level analyze the whole reality. For example, COVID-19. What is the percentage of people affected, infected, or uh, mortality rate, quarantined, hospitalized? You know, so many realities and the depth of data need to be analyzed today. So uh, data gives the power to analyze the reality at the 360 degree perspective. And uh, T, it adds trust to the agency as well as to the beneficiaries. And also we are transparent. When we give data and uh, submit the data to the donor agency, we are also happy that you are very accountable and uh, transparent to the fund received and the beneficiaries, how they have received uh, the funds and also how it has impacted them, especially their individual life. So, I usually share 
all that happens to our children, your children, at good night times, you know, when you give the data that today I have uh, spent this much of money, I have received this much of money, and I am spending this much of money for you as an individual and as collective community, and it gives uh, trust to the beneficiaries. The last one, so it gives access or action to achieve the target. So, you know, so many people, so many agencies ask us to achieve the target. At the end of the day, we need to achieve the target. So, if you don't have the correct data and the right methodology, we will not be able to achieve the target. So, this is just a, in short, how uh, data gives power to organization uh, to make a collective decision. So, we will go to the next slide. The first one is, uh, I have already explained, gives direction to the team and enables the leader to make an objective decision based on the scientific data analysis. So, as I said already, the belief that you have in the power of data at the beginning of a problem defines a solution and destination. If you don't have a belief in the power of data, definitely you cannot find a solution and achieve the destination. So you need to have a strong belief in the power of the data so that you will definitely come out with a solution, an alternative solution, uh, it, which will have an objective uh, solution for your problem. It could be a finance management, it could be staff management, or it could be uh, your own resource management. So we need to see the real picture. So the question that I put forward to all of us is, are we really seeing the big picture? If I am running a YAR center, am I able to see the whole picture of all the children? Uh, usually, Malishwari and Father Akunas used to send uh, snippets saying, how many are orphans in your center? How many are semi-orphans in your center? So these questions give us uh, a picture so, uh, is my yard center giving shelter to semi-orphans more or orphans more or even both the parents alike? So, we need to check the reality. So, we will be able to see the potential obstacles more clearly and negotiate issues with increased agility. So, we will be able to clearly see what are the obstacles uh, in our progress towards a solution. And definitely, this will also enable us to make a right decision. So, that's the first to give direction to the director, to the team, and the organization. You go to the next slide. I'll just give an example of uh, one of our CSR project where we are working with the uh, HCL Foundation, in which we are running almost uh, at present. 21 Police Boys and Girls Clubs is a unique project model uh, in Tamil Nadu. Where we see the first slide on the left hand side, the pie chart, you see in 2016 to 17 we had only 9 clubs. So the beneficiaries were just 800. And 2017 to 18 also we had the same 9 clubs, it increased to 1500. And in 18-19, we had 18 clubs, our beneficiaries count were 4,500 and 19-20 and present 21 clubs where we are reaching out to 6,500 vulnerable children in the slums. So this is a raw data, it does not give any uh, solution or any problem, it just presents a raw data but it is very essential. But this data will give you a direction if you really segregate them, analyze them at 360, 360 degree perspective. For example, if we want to know how many boys and girls are there. So we have analyzed down the pie chart, you can see the bar chart. In 17, 18, you can see the difference and 18, 19 and 19, 20. So uh, we can ask a question, whether are we inclusive in our nature with regard to our clubs. So we can see more or less 
we have both boys and girls together studying in our uh, these clubs but we can also still improve more girls can be integrated into our uh, club or uh, night schools so that is the learning lesson that's the direction that we get and also we can see the academic percentage on the right hand side on the bar chart you can see in 1617 how they performed 10th yellow bar and 12th you can see dark blue so you can see gradually how we were able to achieve the the children the vulnerable children's academic performance in their uh, in their education so this gives the team and the organization okay now we have progressed well now it needs to be sustained that is what the need of the so the, this pie chart gives us a direction that we need to sustain this academic percentage at the same time we need to bring in more number of girls into our also clubs this is just an example for us to know how we can give a direction to a particular solution to a particular problem we we'll move on to the next slide so next slide i was telling you about analysis the data you know we need to analyze the data from 360 degree perspective data is used to analyze covid 19 situation holistically for example now we have tied up with greater chennai corporation which will give us an example for all of us how data has helped us to analyze the reality i will show you in the next chart but i read a quote from one of the persons in 2013 he quoted this data is the new oil it is valuable but if unrefined it cannot be really used it has to be changed into gas plastic or chemicals etc to create a valuable entity so data must be broken down and analyzed for it to have a value so data merely existing in the laptop or the computer will not give you a solution data has to be analyzed properly researched collected stored and communicated to the stakeholders we we'll go to the next uh, slide so where we are working with greater chennai corporation uh, we are working in uh, five zones you know uh, the greater chennai corporation commissioner has said that we have around 85 lakhs of people living in city of chennai nearly 1 crore in which 25 lakhs of people are living in the slums so they got this project saying we need to go door to door campaign to find out who are vulnerable people who are these vulnerable people or those people who have uh, let's say uh, asthma patients or who have uh, heart diseases or you know uh, even diabetics all these people are called vulnerable household follow up and we have around 25000 families to look after by dba don bosco and billam with 194 staff members i am presenting a data based on 8th of august 8th of august this was generated by jay babu our data manager he is also home link uh, coordinator for chennai so we have seen the bar chart vulnerable people are nearly 7000 out of 25000 and we have to identify who are with symptoms you know what are the symptoms symptoms are cold cough fever diarrhea and uh, uh, breathlessness loss of taste if these people come out with saying that we have these symptoms these people are identified and they are referred for testing sometimes there are also asymptomatic people are there you know you are aware of it people do not develop any symptoms but they also may be covid positive so these people are referred to a, a union public health services uphc in the nearest street and they are tested you can see around uh, uh, let's say 89 there were only 39 were tested and six were positive and admitted six were admitted in the hospital this data we have to give every day to chennai corporation they publish it in the 
Chennai Corporation website. Not by individual NGO, they publish it together. That today Chennai received almost 1,900 people tested positive out of 12,000 uh, referrals and tests. So this is a micro level analysis done for uh, this community intervention program. So we need, uh, now we understand the power of data because we can analyze and see in which street the number of cases have increased and we can make that as a containment street and give more awareness uh, for the people not to come out and also make awareness on preventive measures how they can control this COVID-19. So just an example for all of us to understand the power of data at the micro level. We'll move to the next. The third one I was telling you is about building trust and transparency to our own donor agency. You know what happened? March 24th, the lockdown started. So we contacted few of our donor agencies and they said, okay, immediately they said, we will give 50 uh, relief materials. So we have another project called Coastal Slum Project. So we are working in 12 coastal slums. So they said, okay, we will give for all the 300 children. You can see these 300 children are bifurcated. Uh, how many percentage of people, you know? So we identified and told them there are 13 percentage are more vulnerable, more marginalized than the other uh, 87 percentage of children with families. So they said immediately, okay, kindly do the relief works for the 13 percentage of people who are more vulnerable, who are more affected, who are, uh, who are in need of these relief materials. So we started distributing according to the data analysis we did first for the 50 people based on our data who are you no know, who are very poor based on a survey so this helps that trust now it builds trust immediately the donor agency said we like your way of presentation so they said please you go for another round of relief work so we did almost three types of three phases uh, distribution of uh, this grocery this is because of the power of the data we'll move to the next so the fourth one is okay the last one we'll move what i have been saying is the last one it helps us to really achieve our target so donor agencies may help ask our government agencies will ask and even other financial departments will ask if we have the proper data, definitely we will be able to give them the right solution and also will help us also to move forward with very good direction. So this is it uh, for today. Thank you. Thank you for the video. For the synthesis with the, the, the power of data, trying to prove it with the various projects that you are running, with the live data you expressed or explained to us in detail how we can use the power of data or how we can harness from this harvest from this power of data and use it for productivity especially in managing the project and serving the young people especially your example with the Greater Chennai Corporation project, HCL project and also even in the distribution of you know the things uh, to the particular group based on an analysis then you were able to reach out to the smaller group and then you expand it. Thank you very much for the wonderful presentation. Now we here we have with us Father Matthew Thomas. Father Matthew does not need a big explanation. Father was the secretary of DPR Forum before Father Toshi for six years and he led DPR Forum to uh, you know various new initiatives and including some the works that he has done has reached the parliament and even our um, <coughs> Minister for Women and Child Welfare quoted some of the works which was you know, done by Father Matthew. So, Father Matthew is the director of Bosco Bangalore. Now Bosco Bangalore is another big centre uh, in India for the care of the children, especially the young children at risk. One of the big centers, it is just about 10 centers. So, Father Matthew, here we are to listen to you. I'll ask you a few questions. Please try to 
uh, help us to understand the power of data and the future of data with your analysis. Father Matthew, those to Bangalore, uh, Father Matthew can put on your uh, video. Those to Bangalore are several centers. You know, it also runs like Father Leo was telling, uh, many programs spread across the city of Bangalore. The number of children flooding the city is quite high. You know, in 2019 alone, Bosco Bangalore single organization has reached out to more than 3,372 children. And in about five years, they have reached almost 40,000 children. And so the number is enormous number when it comes because it's almost 10 to 15 new children they get every day. It's such a huge inflow of children. How are you keeping track of the movement of children? And how does data help you in this process? Other matter. Hi, Kainas. Hi, all. Good evening. Oh, good afternoon. Yes, it's still good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, I've been asked to share our experience here in Basco with regard to data driven innovation. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Father Matthew, you are muted. Sorry. Somebody else came in between and then we muted by mistake. Uh, is it clear now? Yes, Father. Yes. Thank you. Okay. okay, okay. So, uh, thank you. Thank you for pointing out that. Um, so, Bosco has been in circulation since 1980, and currently we are in uh, in uh, the six bus times and seven railway stations, two big markets, and about uh, 45 slum communities, and in about 120 BBMP wards. We work with government, foundations, agencies, both foreign and local, corporates, and other organizations. We are a strong team of about 160 staff and several volunteers, 10 centers, and we have become quite big. And we are still growing. But in this growth, or this growth has happened in a planned way. To plan, we needed to base ourselves on certain logic. To arrive at this logic, we needed data and evidence. And we really believe that data and evidence is very, very necessary for uh, working and working properly for young at risk. Homelink is the data collection tool that we are using. And Homelink had its origins and pioneering in Bosco, Bangalore. It grew and developed in the context of Bangalore and then moved to many other contexts in the country. Later on Homelink, moved to the YAR National Office and currently the National Office, YAR National Office is taking Homelink tool to all the provinces. And that only says that uh, data is very, very important. Data collection is important. Data driven management of our works are very, very important. During this journey at Bosco, we, we were really convinced about the importance of data and its and and evidence over the years continuous development happened in bosco in data development and data management today we all we in at bosco are very much aware of the fact that data based on growth and innovation is happening continuously here and that is there in every aspect of bosco some of the aspects of Bosco where data collection and management uh, are very important. Are, one is we are present in uh, all these places, bus stands, railway stations, markets, slum, uh, slum communities, and BBMB wards, etc. And we have properly recorded data about all that we do there, especially with regard to rescue and rehabilitation of children at risk. Um, till last year, the number of children rescued on a day to day basis and rehabilitated used to touch about 6,000 and more. 
last year onwards it has come down and it would be uh, somewhere near 5000 and we have properly recorded data about all these children rescued and rehabilitated and uh, what happens to these children after they are rescued uh, what happens to them when they go to the government structures or when they are home place home place and how they are uh, followed up in their homes and uh, what is happening with some of the children who are placed in the CCIs and also sent to private institution. There is data available on all that in Bosco. And that is a very important thing that we need and that we need for uh, taking forward this particular work. Data was very, very important. And uh, it is there in all our uh, different uh, children's homes and also government. Uh, government structure where we send the children. The quality of the care for children and their rehabilitation in the Bosco centers, in the CCIs, uh, is, con is continuously developing. It's only because we have the data about them and we are able to use that data and sit down and discuss this data and evaluate what is happening and that will really lead us to innovate. And some other methods, some other things that we are doing with children in our centers is becoming models and they are being imitated by others. Various forms of education, formal, non-formal, skill training, academic education, etc. All these things are planned for these children in our centers, in our seven centers. It's only because we have proper data regarding what is happening regarding these children and we are able to uh, discuss and evaluate and innovate based on that. Various services and innovations in the slums that we do is another aspect. And Very, very important when we use them in our meetings, it will help us to really plan and understand whether what we are doing the right thing or not, and it helps us to move forward. Awareness creation is another aspect. We do move into the community with a lot of awareness creation for the welfare of children, for the rights of the children, and people are willing to listen to us. People are willing to uh, accept what we are talking about just because we are credible because we have the data to rely upon. The nine child-related campaigns that we have is again, they are all based on data, based on the kind of information that is very, very important. And that will lead to the kind of transformation. And we are not just saying stories over there. We network with government, with ICPS, Child Welfare Committee, JJB, State Commission for Child Rights, ICDS, legal department, transport, health, education, foster care, aftercare. This kind of networking is possible because we are invited into all these areas because they believe that we have something very important to say and what we say is data-based and evidence-based. At Bosco, there are about some 31 departments and these departments have their plans in log frame. Everything is planned and kept. And the planning is uh, possible only because, again, data is there and we have collected the data 